Hi, my name is Jay, and welcome to the second tutorial on getting started with GarageBand. Before we start recording tracks, I have three recommendations to help make your sounds as powerful as possible. This is essential for your own unique stamp, as well as understanding the creative potential of digital production. The first is using smart controls. I mentioned this a little bit in the previous video, but if you're using GarageBand sounds, this is an easy and effective way to get your sounds to be better than the presets you start with. Right now I have an open project with only an electric piano sound, but certainly there's a way to make this sound better or to fit your track a little bit more originally. In order to do that, you would need to navigate to the View tab and select Show Smart Controls or press B on your keyboard. Once you have that open, we can see a few knobs that are pertaining just to this electric piano sound. In order to start playing some notes to see what it sounds like, if you don't have a MIDI controller, again, the shortcut is Command K to open up musical typing. So now when you type anything on your keyboard, you will hear a sound. So just to demonstrate a little bit of how this can be important, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move a little bit of the decay and the model knobs right here. And it's okay if you don't know what any of these knobs do. If you play with them a little bit, you'll quickly find out. And you can already see that this electric piano sound is pretty different from the one that you started with. I recommend messing around with all of these knobs in order to find your own unique sound. So let's test this out with another sound. What about a synthesizer? In order to add a new track, uh, an easy way to do it is to press this plus sign right here. And we're prompted with the dialog window. Since it is a software instrument, this is what we want to choose. And press create. From here, since the library is already open, I'm going to choose synthesizer, classics, and FM piano. Let's hear what this sounds like. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to bump up the reverb a little bit, and let's see if you can notice a difference here. How about the timbre? So you can already see that even those little adjustments make your sound a little bit more original and fit your mix a little bit better. The second recommendation that I have for you is to use EQ to shape your sounds even more. So EQ we can find right where the smart controls section is. If you go down to where the knobs are, you can see this controls sign. And right next to it we have EQ. So if you click EQ you can see a graph of the sound that is coming out of whatever instrument you have selected. Right now we have the FM piano sound and there are lots of different nodes here that you can move up or down in order to shape your sound. Over here we have some of the lower sounds and up here we have some of the higher sounds. So just to give you an example of kind of how this works, I'm going to play some notes and fool around with this a little bit so you can see. With whatever sound you choose, I recommend fooling around with EQ and seeing how you can make that sound just a little bit better. Understanding EQ is absolutely fundamental to becoming a good producer, and this is a very good way to start. A simpler way to EQ your sounds can be found right in the Smart Controls Master section. So if we go down to the Smart Controls and click Master, and then Output, we can see three knobs right here, low, mid, and high. These are EQ as well, but in more broad general terms. And you have several other important knobs that you can use for more creative potential. The third recommendation that I have for you today is to enhance your sounds with effects for even more creative possibilities. 
In order to do that, right in the smart control section, if you click this I button, you can see an audio units box and an audio effects box within it where you can add more effects. So going back to the electric piano sound, why don't we add a reverb into this audio effects box? So if you just click right there, audio units, Apple, and find your reverb, which is already included in your GarageBand packet, you can already see a lot more possibilities to enhance your sound. So in order to show this to you, I'm just going to mess around with some of these knobs and see how reverb can be affected. To close out of that reverb, all we have to do is hit this X and the reverb is still included in the sound. In order to bring it back to modify it even more, all you have to do is click the reverb itself and it'll pop back up. If you don't want that reverb anymore, if you click these little arrows right next to the effects box, you can also put no plugin to take it all the way out or switch it out for something different. There's lots of different effects that GarageBand includes. In addition, you can stack different effects or even the same effect and have them simultaneously happening at the same time. It's important to know that there is an order to the way that this happens. So the sound first comes to the reverb and then goes to the filter in this setup. If you want to switch them around, all you have to do is drag and drop and the order will change. Some of these sounds may not need extra effects beyond the knobs that are presented to you and EQ, but if you want to fool around with them a little bit more, this is an excellent place to start. With these three sound shaping recommendations, smart controls, EQ, and audio effects, you already have the tools to make very good quality sounds. I suggest learning how to shape your sounds as much as possible to have your own original sound and trust your ears. There's no right or wrong way when it comes to shaping sounds. Find the sounds that you like the most. For next time, I'll introduce you to a free plugin called Tal Noisemaker, which will give you even more power in this amazing field of digital production. Take care, guys, and see you next time.